Welcome to Postscript from Faithbridge Church. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the message by sitting down with the teacher of the day. Welcome to another edition of Postscript. My name is Michael Sullivan and I'm the Young Adults Coordinator here at Faithbridge. I'm joined by Pastor Ken who just closed out our series on wisdom with a great sermon on envy. Uh, thanks for joining us, Pastor Ken. I was wondering if you could help us distinguish maybe between jealousy and envy. I sure. think normally we use those terms synonymously. Right. Yeah. yeah, and it's a, it's a commonly made mistake. Jealousy is like you're reading God's word about how God was jealous for the love of his people. Mm -hmm. So I would be jealous for the love of my wife, Suzanne, and her fidelity. Mm. No sin in that. Uh, the, the sin comes w when one does not get what one was jealous for in their response, because mm -hmm. out of that can come anger and wrath and bitterness and certainly envy. Mm -hmm. Envy is what we typically are meaning when we say jealousy. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm jealous that he has that and that I don't. Well, no, 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 you're not, that, what you really are is envious. Mm. Perhaps it's because envy is, it, it's just a word that sounds a little worse than jealousy. Mm. Maybe that, maybe it's <laughs> not just out of ignorance, but maybe there's something to the fact that we'd rather say I'm jealous than I'm envious. Mm. Uh, because as one of the sources I was reading talked about, envy is a very embarrassing sin to admit mm -hmm. because it's pretty low. Yeah. <laughs> and sure. Yeah. Well, today you talked about really th three steps, I guess, confession, being your brother's keeper, and then refocusing on God. Is there what is the most difficult part of the process of I guess healing from envy? Sure. Well, starting probably getting past denial and realizing when we're saying things like, well, if I had as much money as he had, then I could do this. Mm -hmm. Or if I had her, you know, figure, or if I had her, you know, hair or whatever, stopping there mm -hmm. and arresting it and saying, no, no, it's not, it's not about him. It's not about her. It's about you. Right. And probably that's the hardest part is just getting to, to where we cat, catch it and confess it mm -hmm. and own it. And then when we move to being our brother's keeper, the, the several things that, that I mentioned from that passage in Luke 6, mm -hmm. perhaps the, the hardest one there again is the first starting praying mm -hmm. to say, I'm going to pray for him. I'm going to pray for her. Right. And I'm not going to pray mean things. I'm going to pray blessing things. And I'm not just going to do it once. Keep doing I'm going to pray it daily. Mm -hmm. Day after day, week after week, month after month. And, but I'm telling you, there is nothing that softens the heart like when you pray for a person. Mm -hmm. And then you speak well of them. And then you do good for them. And then you find out, I actually love them. I love her. And I, I, something's changed. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. So... I guess in a word, the hardest thing is starting. Mm. This is not an easy thing to do, this dealing with envy. Is there anything that would be supplemental or somebody could benefit from oh, in sure. going through this process? Well, community. Mm. So, you, you know, in the testimony that, that we shared of, of Becca's life, uh, what was one of the key turning points in her story, it's when she began to get mentored mm -hmm. by the, the good friend, dear friend, mentor lady that she mentioned. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing like community mm -hmm. to have somebody who you know loves you. So you can get past that. I know I'm loved by you. But then they can get to speaking truth. And there's, mm -hmm. and we have to have someone who could do that to us and, and with us and speak truth to us in love and open God's word and say, now look here, this is what the Bible says about you. Right. 
and we've got to get this going in your heart um, instead of w what you're gauging your life by or what you're trying to find your compass needle fixating on. Uh, so there's nothing like community. How do you get into that? Well, it's hard to get, you know, a, a mentor or a discipler just like that. Mm -hmm. In the instance that she mentioned, I, I actually had a, a lady's name in mind, and it just that just worked. But I think most commonly it happens by getting into a grow group mm -hmm. here at Faith Bridge, crossing the line and saying, "I'm going to get in a grow group." And what you find in a grow group is that you have <clears throat> 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 13, 17 people who are in the grow group. And you have a leader. And you begin to, to make some friends. And you begin to have some people who know you and um, who pray for you. And you're praying for them and mm -hmm. encouraging them. And you're doing life together. And oftentimes, it's in that setting, you find yourself particularly clicking with a person uh, we always encourage same gender mm -hmm. person. Uh, you really need that for a discipleship relationship to happen uh, appropriately. And you find a brother or you find a sister that you click with very well, or maybe two. And you sort of, you, you keep meeting in the grow group, but then you, you, you schedule a supplementary meeting, mm. which that's really where we move into discipleship. Mm. Um, and... So I would say that would be the other resource that we have at our disposal sure. um, that I didn't mention in the in the sermon today, but it, which is certainly mention worthy. Well, I think that's really helpful, and and the talk was very helpful as well. So thank you, Good. Pastor Ken, mm -hmm. and be sure to join us back next week as we'll be back for another postscript. Thanks for joining us for postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org forward slash postscript.